It took five years to reach a damning conclusion that the Central Intelligence Agency employed torture more often than we thought, used tactics more brutal than we thought, and hid those facts from elected officials. Secretary of State John Kerry was reluctant to release the report before being fully prepared for backlash. And it's no wonder. Over thousands of pages, the Senate Intelligence Committee details a CIA interrogation program enacted in the days after September 11, 2001, and how it grew out of control, describing secret CIA prisons where waterboarding and other so-called enhanced interrogation techniques were used extensively. CIA detainees at one facility, described as a dungeon, were kept in complete darkness constantly shackled in isolated cells with loud noise or music and only a bucket to use for human waste. It also details how senior CIA officials routinely dismiss concerns from rank-and-file intelligence officers and misled White House and congressional officials about the program's scope and effectiveness. Former Vice President Dick Cheney has dismissed the Senate report, saying the CIA's interrogation methods were absolutely totally justified. But fellow Republicans disagree. I have long believed some of these practices amounted to torture, as a reasonable person would define it, especially, but not only, the practice of waterboarding, which is a mock execution and an exquisite form of torture. Shortly before the report was released, the Department of Defense put U.S. military facilities on heightened alert, fearing recriminations. Here for more reaction to the report is WGBH News contributor Charlie Sennett. He's also co-founder of Global Post and founder of the Ground Truth Project. Welcome back to Greater Boston, Charlie. Thanks so much. So as somebody who's traveled extensively in the mm -hmm. Middle East and Iran and Iraq, how will this report be received by ISIS, Al-Qaeda. I mean, this was the Bush administration, but presumably mm -hmm. hundreds of these yeah. redacted names are still alive. Will there be recriminations? Will, will they hunt them down? Mm. It's a really good question. And you know, one of the, one of the tactical things that's gonna have to be gone through in these thousands of pages is the pseudonyms that are being revealed within this report, how are they going to mathematically put it together, who's who, who's and then who? begin a hunt to try to kill those who did this interrogation? I think that's probably the primary concern, the one that's been expressed by Secretary of State Kerry and others about the release of this report. That said, I also think in a broader context, I think this is so, damaging to our country because of what our country did. I mean, that's the big effect, that now the world will see in very clear and stark light that we tortured people. And no one is a more articulate person to express um, how sad that is for our country than Senator John McCain, yeah. the Republican who supported the Democratic uh, report. This is a democratically yeah. researched report and now released. And it, it's very interesting that McCain... Well, we should say he was held for five years in Hanoi. And he's the only guy in that years. Senate floor yeah. who understands what torture means. Yeah. He was tortured and he lived through detention. And he's so uh, articulate and powerful mm -hmm. about, about that our country is going to lose this war on terror if we bring ourselves down into the gutter and we do things like torture people. The saddest part of it was that the admission that the torture did not work. Yeah, this is huge. And you know something I have to say, this is not a shocking news development for anyone no. who's followed this issue. I've covered uh, terrorist insurgencies in a lot of countries. I've covered it in Northern Ireland, I've covered it in Iraq, I've covered it in Palestine, and I've covered it in, Af you know, one, one really intense one is Algeria. Mm -hmm. The French experience mm -hmm. in Algeria was very heavy. There's, there's a long history on this. Torture doesn't work. The CIA on its own reached that conclusion in 1989, before 9-11, that when you torture people, you get bad information. That was their own conclusion. You had people like Senator McCain talking about this in the immediate aftermath of 9-11. You had people who were good Americans, just like those CIA operatives who sort of led the agency down this dark tunnel, claimed to have been good Americans. Mm. Well, I don't know. I think they betrayed they what this? we're about as a country. I just saw an advanced screening of the movie Unbroken, which of course is about mm -hmm. Louis Zamperini, who spent a lot of time sure. um, in a prison uh, during World War II, in, in, in a prison camp, I should say, mm -hmm. Japanese, tortured, excuse. 
they didn't give up anything, yeah. or they lied to their captors. I mean, mm -hmm. so this is something we've known for we should we should decades. have known. You know, your your original question, which is a really good one, I think. How will this play out in the region? One thing I am thinking about very closely is not just what could possibly happen to these CIA officials who are out there in the world right now. But another thing is, think about the Americans who, God forbid, are captured and detained mm. in these countries. We know this firsthand, very sadly, through the case of, of Jim Foley. Mm -hmm. Jim Foley was tortured. Yeah, he was. The other people who were held by ISIS were tortured, particularly the Americans and the British. Now, what that could mean for those people who are held hostage, who are detained, who are innocent civilians or reporters trying to do their jobs, we now face an even greater peril because they're going to look at the barbarity and mm. the intensity yes. of what was done to, to, as they would see it, their compatriots, mm -hmm. and think if America plays by those rules, we'll start to. That's the slippery slope. That's the really dangerous and very dark tunnel that this country went down after 9-11. And anyone who's covered terrorism knows when you go that way, you lose. What makes us think it is it's still going on? I mean, this is the Bush administration. You know, the the Bush administration has a lot to answer for here, particularly Hayden, former director of CIA, who was not telling the truth about the extent of this, who was not telling the truth about its effectiveness. He really is going to have a lot to answer for. But let's be clear, the Obama administration has made this mm -hmm. more secret than ever. This is a black box, and, and we should applaud the research that went into this mm -hmm. report and the release of the report. But we also have to criticize this administration, the Obama administration, for the secrecy that it's shrouded around mm. this program. And we have to keep banging away on this. As reporters, I think this is a huge issue for us to get that answer. Is it still going on? And when do you put a stop to it? All right, Charlie Senate, as always, thanks Thank for being you. with us.